What's up guys, welcome to the final tutorial in our Java course. This is going to be all about classes and objects. We're going to get an intro into what classes and objects are, how they relate to each other, and of course how to use them. We'll start by exploring what they are, then we'll create a custom class, and then we'll create a, an object of that class and learn how to use it. So let's head to the code and get started. Alright, so starting from pretty much a clean slate again. Let's talk about what classes and objects are. The weird thing is that we first have to know what an object is before we know what a class is, but we have to implement a class before we can use an object. Now we can actually see a class here, but we haven't really talked about what it is, so let's start with the basics. An object in code is essentially an entity with state and behavior. So it could represent anything. In a game, it could represent a character, for example. Because a character has state, that's going to be the basically the sum of all of its properties or attributes. And it has behavior. For example, it can move, it might be able to attack, it might be able to pick things up, etc. Okay? So those would be objects. Essentially, with an object, we represent the state through variables. So these are all kind of properties and attributes that an object will have. If we're going back to that uh, video game character example, uh, a character might have stuff like a name, might have a certain number of health, might have an inventory full of items, etc. Okay, so these are all going to be properties or attributes that an object has that represent its state. Now the behavioral aspects are executed through functions. For example, the player might be able to move around, in which case it's changing its position. It might be able to pick something up, in which case it's changing its inventory. It might be able to heal up by consuming something, in which case it's changing its health. So you can see that most of these behaviors are actually functions that will change the variables that represent its state. Okay, so objects just represent uh, clusters of data that have state and behavior. The state is maintained through variables, and the, there's functions that represent the behavior, which for the most part just change the variable values. Okay, so let's launch into an example, and I figure we might as well use that game character example. So we'll start by creating a class that will represent that game character. We should probably create it before our start class, because we will be using it in here, although it doesn't matter too much. Typically, but not always, we actually put classes in their own files. But for now, we'll stick it all in the same file. So we'll create a class. We'll call this something like a game character. Note the capitalization there. Okay, and this will need several components. So we need to start by um, adding its properties or its attributes. So it might have a string name. Okay, don't worry, we'll assign a value later. It might have an int that is going to represent the position. So int position. And it might have an integer that represents its health. Okay, this is going to be a really, really basic representation. Okay, what about some functions? So this game character might have a move function. Okay, um, which is going to, I'm going to have it actually be a void. We don't really need to output the final position, and I'll explain why in a second. And this is going to be called move. We'll take in a movement amount, which will be an integer. So int amount. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use this function to change the position for this particular character. So what we need to do is we're going to say this dot position plus equals amount. Okay, there's no need to output any values or anything because we're changing the position of this game character. So when we use the keyword this, we just refer to anything that exists within this current class. Okay, so this dot position is referring to the position that belongs to a game character. Okay, and we need to do this with, well, we should be doing this with every attribute or every function that we're calling within this class. All right. So there's actually one more component that we need here, and that's going to be a constructor, often called an initializer in other languages. So this is a special type of function that is going to be used to set up the initial state or the initial values. We also use this function to create instances of an object, which will be um, instances of a class, which will be an object. So in our case, we can do so like this. The, the constructor function has special syntax, and it's actually just the same name as the name of the class. We open up the brackets, however, and then we're going to take in values for name, position, and health. So we'll start with a string name. We'll start with an int position and an int health. OK, then what we need to do is we need to assign the values. So we're going to say this game character's name is going to be whatever name we pass in. Oops, 
Okay, we're going to say this game character's position is going to be whatever position we're passing in, and the same with health. This dot health is going to be equal to health. Okay, cool. So, fair bit going on here. Let's talk about what's happening. So again, we're creating a game character class. This is going to be essentially the blueprint of a game character object. So within our um, program here, we would create some objects that would be game character types. Each of them would have names, positions, and healths, and they'd be able to move. Okay. So a class is really just a blueprint of a an object, specifying which variables and which functions it should have. Okay. Each instance of game character, which will be an object, will have to have a name, position, and health. Okay, we're going to use this function, the constructor, to set things up. In this case, just sets up the initial values of name, position, and health, and then it can execute this move function to change its position. Now, again, realistically, a game character would have much more than this. They'd probably have maximum health and inventory. They'd have more actions such as heal or attack or whatever. But we're not going to worry about that. Again, this is more just to demonstrate the concept. Now, let's create an instance of our game character so that we can actually use it, because this is a little bit like a function implementation. It is showing you what should happen, but it's not actually doing anything yet. So what we can do in our main function down here is create an instance of it. So this is actually defining a new data type every time we create a class. Instead of being, let's say, an integer or a string, the variable is now going to be a game character type variable. We'll just call this GC for short. And this is going to have to be an instance of a new game character. Okay, so we use the new to, Im to infer that we are actually creating an instance of game character. Note how it's automatically using the constructor to um, tell us that we need a name, position, and health. So we just pass in some values here. Again, make sure they're of the same, the correct type position will start at zero, health will have maybe 100 health. Okay, and now we've created our first object. So this object is an instance of the game character class. That means that our object has used this function to set up its name, position, and health, and it can move if it wants. So this uh, GC variable has a name, a position, and a health of Nimish, zero, and 100, respectively. Okay, so now let's talk about how to access the values or the state stored within this game character. We do so with the dot syntax. So in this case, GC dot, and you can already see a list of the possible options, health, name, and position. We can also call the move function. So let's say we just wanted to print out the game character's health, okay? What we could do is actually just do something like this. We do system dot, uh, system dot out dot print line, okay? And all we need to do is print the GC dot health. OK, so this is just going to get whatever value of health is stored in this GC, in this case 100, and it's going to print it out. So if we save this and we go to run it, we should just get 100 printed out. And indeed we do. Similarly, we can actually change it um, directly using uh, the, basically the same functionality. So we could say something like gc.health is actually equal to 200. OK, if we then run this again, we should see that the GC's health is 200, okay? And that's because we're assigning a new value to the variable that represents the game character's state, okay? So the game character's um, value of health is now 200. Similarly, if we wanted to call the move function, we could. So we could do like GC.move, okay? We can pass in an amount, maybe 10, okay? And if we want to print out the game character's new position, we do GC.position, okay? Again, we can run this code and we'd see that our position is equal to 10 because we call the move function and that changes the position of the particular game character we're working with. Okay, so I know this can be a little bit of a confusing subject, but it doesn't really need to be. Just remember that each instance has its own state, its own values for, in this case, health, position, and name, okay? And it has its own kind of functions. We can create multiple instances of game characters, each with their own values, or we can have game characters with exactly the same values if we really want. Because this can be a slightly complex topic, I definitely recommend that you practice heavy with this one. This is really kind of bringing together everything that we've covered in the course so far into one big final topic. So really, as long as you understand the bits and pieces from before, you should be fine with this one. So definitely, practice a little bit, try creating your new, uh, some new classes and new objects, 
And when you're ready to move on, we can finish up by summarizing this course. Okay, so thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.